we really can't say how many animals saved how many lives, but we estimated at least 10,000 lives in, in Vietnam alone. And I just happened to glance up and there was this great big thing standing in front of the caravan on him. And then it started moving. And Kesey not only reads my mind, but she also reads my husband's mind. And she has actually read the mind of strangers. Does Australia have its very own Bigfoot? And what's the story behind a telepathic parrot? Animal X investigates the weird world of animal mysteries. First, some unbelievable stories of bravery by courageous canines, ones that have risked their own lives to save others. Dogs are our pets and companions, and we love them even though they often seem unable to do anything more than lie around and run after sticks. But some dogs have a streak of bravery that would put most humans to shame. In situations that would terrify grown men, these dogs persistently protect others, despite the threat to their own lives. These animals are heroes. We really can't say how many animals saved how many lives, but we estimated at least 10,000 lives in, in Vietnam alone. Just as there are brave human beings and cowardly human beings, so there are brave dogs and cowardly dogs. Animal X travels first to Salt Ste Marie in Canada and later to Florida to investigate two incredible dogs that walk the fine line between bravery and the risk of sudden death. Paul Guitard is a champion sled racer he would not be alive today if it wasn't for the bravery of his husky, Grizzly. I've been sledding for about two years when I got Grizzly. And uh, it was the best thing that ever happened because he ended up being my best lead dog. But helping Paul to become the eighth top sled racer in the world is not the only thing Grizzly will be remembered for. His real challenge began on an ordinary day when Paul took his dogs for their regular walk. I was going down the trail where I usually go down, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this black bear jumped, and uh, next thing you know, she's on top of me, and she had me by the arm, and I looked over, and here there was two cubs on the other side, so what happened was I got right in between her and her cubs. And then all of a sudden, Grizzly came back and jumped on the bear and started barking at it, so the bear let my arm go, and, you know, I thought, you know, this is it, and I uh, tried to run for the first tree there was. I started climbing up, and the bear again came at me and grabbed me by the foot, and then she started pulling me down the tree, and uh, I started kicking her, and at that time, I thought, you know, life was over, you know. Again, Grizzly came, you know, to save me again, and went at the bear, started biting at it. I was up the tree and Grizzly fought the bear for nearly seven hours. You know, I thought it sooner or later Grizzly would run away or the bear would get up there and it would get me. But you no, know, he just, he was there for me and he cared enough. Paul and Grizzly were finally rescued, but Grizzly had stayed by Paul's side for the entire seven torturous hours. His courage was acknowledged by several awards. Carlene Bradford is an author who has researched and retold dozens of stories about animal heroes, including Paul's. There seem to be so many stories of animals who somehow or other knew when there was danger and did something about it. I think what was remarkable about Grizzly was that he stayed for so long and he fought that bear off for so long. It was really quite something for that dog to do that. But what encourages dogs to show this kind of courageous stamina? Professor Jeffrey Masson is the world's leading expert in animal emotions. And the question is, is the dog acting instinctively or is it because of its emotional ties to its companion? And I think the answer is a bit of both. Obviously a dog is a social creature, it grows up in a pack, it has a loyalty to the pack, and we become part of the pack. So their life is really dedicated to us, the leader of the pack. But sometimes they will risk their lives to save someone who is not the leader of the pack, and that's really quite interesting. A good example of this is the touching story of Susie, 
who was one of the thousands of war dogs used in the 14-year war with Vietnam between 1961 and 1975. Susie is responsible for saving dozens of lives, even though only one of them belonged to her primary carer, Paul Morgan. The whole armed forces in Vietnam had about 4,000 dogs. They did everything. They guarded flight lines, they guarded ammunition, they went out on patrol, they detected mines, booby traps, and the morale of the unit picked up when a dog went up front with the scouts out front. So they felt if the dog was out front that they were safer. I knew if I had a dog with me, I could sleep at night. Susie may have made the young soldier feel safe at night, but that was nothing compared to the astonishing role this dog was about to play in a gruesome battle. A helicopter gunship fight was going on about, oh, I'd say um, a mile, half a mile from us, and it hit one of the aircraft and it blew up. So we got sent on a rescue mission to go pick up the downed pilot. His name was Donald Clark. We knew he was out there somewhere. We knew he was shot down. And as we were heading for his aircraft, Susie wouldn't move. So I figured that she'd lost her nerve. And instead, she had alerted on um, enemy soldiers to our right in, in bunkers. We would have been ambushed by the same people that shot down Captain Clark's aircraft. Thanks to the dog, none of us got killed. When we got over to Captain Clark's aircraft, of course, he was burned beyond belief. So we wrapped his remains in a uh, poncho. Susie sat on top of the remains while we floated away out of We were completely unreal. As soon as the relief aircraft came in, um, I put Captain Clark up forward in the flight deck, and then Susie sat on his remains there so they wouldn't fall out of the aircraft. Just total, absolute devotion. Just She just knew what was going on all the time. A lot of people don't even know what those dogs did. It was a terrible crime to leave those animals behind, especially after all the devotion to duty. We ran out on the, our allies, is what we did. She knew what she was supposed to do, and she walked out front fearlessly and did her job. Now she was my buddy. I knew that was going to happen. Oh yeah, she worth my life. Animals often play vital roles in human society. We have a history of relying on these dogs to protect us and even fight our causes. They are more than just pets, and their ability to put themselves at risk to save someone else elevates them to the same level we reserve for any hero, human or animal. Just as some animals amaze us with their heroic feats, others terrify us with a chance encounter. After the break, Animal X investigates Australia's very own Bigfoot and analyzes some interesting findings. You can see this ridge, what's a negative space here, where the heel has uh, imprinted more deeply than the mid part of the foot. Welcome back to Animal X. It's claimed that Bigfoot-type creatures exist the world over. In Australia, it's called the Yowie, and there's even a specialized group dedicated to proving its existence. So what does it look like, and could there be more than one species? What could be lurking in dense bushland in this isolated rural community in Eastern Australia? Witnesses have reported seeing a giant lumbering creature Australia's version of America's infamous Bigfoot. Its name, the Yowie. And I really thought I was going to lose my life that night. It screamed, it roared, it started off by stalking me like a cat. I looked up at the dam and there was a big black one. I just caught it out of the corner of my eye. That the hominoids are the true upright walking indigenous primates of planet Earth. Animal X travels to the small farming community of Taree, 150 miles north of Sydney, to investigate reports of this frightening creature with glowing red eyes. The Australian Hominid Research Group. They have been called in by frightened residents who have seen and heard this beast stalking the woods. The group's members include ex-military personnel and private investigators. They searched the bush with state-of-the-art equipment, including heat-sensitive cameras and digital video units. 
hoping to capture the creature, at least on tape. Their leader, Dean Harrison, is himself a witness to this creature. Suddenly I was out there with a 600 pound gorilla chasing me, screaming and roaring. It's got to change in some way. From there, of course, I wanted answers. And the deeper I dug, the more I found. And their digging has turned up some interesting information, which they say proves the Yowie exists. The team has concluded that there are three different species of Yowie inhabiting the area. Two are grey, standing nine and seven feet tall. The other is black and also seven feet. In Louisiana, New Orleans, researcher and author Lloyd Pye agrees that there is more than one type of Yowie. In his book, Everything You Know Is Wrong, he investigates varying hominid theories. The Yowie is just frankly a different name for the hominoid creature that we call Bigfoot Sasquatch and that the uh, Europeans and Chinese call the Almas. The Yowies are going to be um, the same situation that you have in the States. Anything that is large and upright and covered with hair is going to be called a Yowie. But there will be two kinds. There will be the giant kind and there will be the more man-sized kind. That will be the Alma. The giant kind will be the Bigfoot Sasquatch kind. Half a world away, back in Australia, Vicky Nelson says a Yowie encounter is a terrifying one. We were coming back from town, and as you come in the road, you can look up and see our property. And I just happened to glance up, and there was this great big thing standing in front of the caravan awning. And then it started moving. And my husband saw the same thing. When we got up top, the dog was hiding under the caravan and she wouldn't come out. She was scared to death. And this thing was gone by the time we got up top. But not everyone is convinced about the existence of the Yowie. Dr. Alex Ritchie of the Australian Museum questions the reliability of eyewitnesses. You can't say that people didn't see something, but unless they have photographs, and funny, with all the cameras in the country, nobody's produced a good photograph. I'm not saying that people didn't see things, but in the half-light or in the bush or that, and once one person suggests that the rest begin to think that they've maybe even believe that they've seen it. Um, so you have to take these things with a, a big grain of salt until somebody brings evidence. Back in the bush, the hominid research group believe they have found that evidence, a Yowie footprint. In order to verify their claim that wild men are stalking residents of Eastern Australia, they take a plaster cast. In an Animal X World exclusive, one of the casts is packaged and sent to the United States for forensic testing. In a Texas laboratory, we bring together Jimmy Chilcott, a forensic detective with the Conroe Police Department, an expert in human and primate fingerprinting, and Dr. Jeff Moldrum of the Idaho State University, who's an expert in primate movement. Over the years, they have examined hundreds of Bigfoot casts. Together, they inspect the Yowie print to determine whether it could be a mysterious creature as yet unclassified by science. Uh, maybe you could take a look at it and see if you notice any latent features right off the bat. Well, Jeff, it's a neat looking cast, but uh, unfortunately I see no uh, friction ridge detail at all. The soil was just not uh, conducive to good fingerprint uh, capturing. Jeff Meldrum, however, says the print has some Bigfoot characteristics he's seen before. If you look from this perspective, you can see this ridge, what's a negative space here, where the heel has uh, imprinted more deeply than the mid part of the foot. This feature I've, I've seen on a number of casts uh, from the Pacific Northwest. What we're dealing with is a human condition in which the arch is well developed, and so when the heel lifts off the soil, the entire length of the foot pivots around the ball. But in an ape foot, if we were looking at a chimpanzee or a gibbon, it would look very similar to this. And that will sometimes push up a ridge of soil behind that joint and give this rather distinctive look that you see here. Now that, that's intriguing. Though disappointed by the inconclusive results, the Australian hominid team continues to believe that the Yowie exists 
and are adamant that one day they will capture footage of it for all the world to see. Until then, residents will have to learn to share their community with whatever it is that's out there. From mysterious hairy hominids to feathered freaks of nature, after the break we meet a telepathic parrot and test to see whether it really does have incredible psychic powers. The results were spectacular. They showed that out of 78 tests, um, 32 of them were ones in which the parrot got a direct hit. Welcome back. The issue of telepathy has been debated for centuries. Many claim it's possible for one person to read the mind of another. But what of a telepathic parrot? A pet, it's said, that not only can read people's minds, but has a vocabulary of more than 500 words. Dedicated animal owners have long believed their faithful companions capable of amazing psychic powers. But the conscious connection some creatures seem to share with humans challenges scientific understanding. It's like she's actually seeing through my eyes. It's very, very strange. This does really seem to be telepathy. As far as I'm concerned, that's really junk. Um, there's no evidence for any person, animal, or thing being telepathic. To investigate an amazing bird tale, Animal X travels to New York in America, where one pet owner claims she has proof that her parrot practices interspecies telepathy. New York artist Amy Morgana and a three and a half year old Nikisi share an incredible bond. Amy believes her feathered friend knows what she is thinking. Nikisi not only reads my mind, but she also reads my husband's mind and she has actually read the mind of strangers that I have personally requested her to do. And according to Amy, her Congo African gray parrot has another amazing gift. Can I have a kiss? Okay. Hurry up. Okay. Reach out. Okay. Yeah. Amy claims Ankisi has a vocabulary of nearly 580 words, and it's growing almost daily. She was actually taught language like you would teach a human child. She generates her own original and unique sentences with a sort of rudimentary understanding of grammar, uh, which is, you know, pretty unprecedented. And through, through her ability to use language, I discovered that she was also able to read my thoughts. With the help of renowned British animal scientist Dr. Rupert Sheldrake, Amy puts Nkisi's telepathic ability to the test. They were in separate rooms, 55 feet apart, when Amy says she looked at a selection of pictures. They had been provided by a third person who would seal them in envelopes before mixing them up. You can put them to your flower. The results were spectacular. They showed that out of 78 tests, um, 32 of them were ones in which the parrot got a direct hit. It actually said what she's looking at, for example. There's a picture of a phone, so the parrot says, what are you doing on the phone? Um, so that's a far, far higher rate of success than you would expect by chance. Um, the odds against chance statistically are about one billion to one. Two synchronized cameras recorded the experiment. Dr. Sheldrake says the tests were strictly controlled. There was no possible clue that the parrot could have had in these experiments, except for picking things up from Amy's mind, and the word for that is telepathy. But skeptics, including Lewis Walpert, a professor of biology at London's University College, quickly dismiss talk of telepathy. The idea that parrots are telepathic is so absurd because all the evidence from animal experiments is that animals don't even have a concept of cause. They don't have a concept of other people's minds. Some skeptics just aren't very interested in the evidence. 
Whatever the experts argue, Amy believes and Kesey has an incredible psychic ability, one that may have far-reaching implications for other animals. The idea of a language-using parrot being able to translate for another animal species that could not use language is a very interesting one. I'm terribly sorry. We are not little radio stations giving out mind waves. That's junk. And Kisi is teaching me as much as I am teaching her. And, and I'm just amazed every day. It's a new frontier. At this point, it would not surprise me if the day would come where I could just talk to her like I'm talking to you. Amy's work with Enkisi will continue. But in the meantime, while animal telepathy is still regarded by many as paranormal, perhaps this parrot could help prove to humans that their pets may indeed possess psychic powers. From astonishing acts of bravery by our faithful companions, dogs turned animal heroes, to the Yowie, Australia's wild man of the bush, and a telepathic parrot with an awesome vocabulary. The mysterious tales of the animal world continue to fascinate and perplex us. After all, it said there are stranger things in heaven and earth than we can think of. You've just seen some of them on Animal X.